Well, hello, boys and girls. To when I feel like eight o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And when we feel like eight o'clock, and we say we because we have Mr. Bork back again, Joe Bork. I've been talking him up. Young man's one of the finest hockey minds I've come across in a while. Love listening to him. If you like really good, in depth NHL hockey talk, this is the place where you're going to find it. Uh, we, we talk a lot of Philadelphia because, worst of all, we're both Philadelphia fans. And, and uh, you do a Philadelphia podcast, do you not, Joe Bork? Yeah, yeah, we do a uh, true Philadelphian sports cast, which the Flyers okay. once called the grittiest take. So that's what we do for the Flyers. But we are not doing Philadelphia today. We are going into, we're going to look at the weekend. Um, and some of the play or some of the round robin teams that are happening. And while I'm talking about this, make sure you're commenting in the comment section and hit the subscribe and bell if you can. It makes the uh, algorithm, algorithm as they like to say, for the YouTube work well so more people can see this fine programming. Uh, let's go into Saturday because these are some very interesting games. Uh, it hasn't been all that interesting maybe to some people but i found it interesting i found it interesting to see what the coaches or players minds were on these round robin games and how, how what kind of importance they seem to put on them two teams that seem to put a great amount of importance on them or at least they played like it is where we're going to start is uh on saturday the golden knights and avalanche are going to be playing, and um, they are playing for the one-two spot, are they not? Yeah. Yeah, they're playing because they're both coming in 2-0, and and that's going to be a very good game. Those are going to be both Saturday games, Lightning, Flyers, Avs, Knights are going to be the two most exciting of the round robin. You have two teams coming in 2-0. and Yeah, so... What do you see? What have you seen? You you've been watching these games as well as I do. Um, the Avalanche and Golden Knights, to me, both of them seem to be playing a very offensive, high intensity game, even for a round robin. Um, are you finding that same thing as well? Yeah. No, the Golden Knights. I don't think play a game. Well, yesterday, obviously, uh, early on, they played a little bit on Thursday slower and then started coming back against St. Louis and then never looked back after that. But once they got going, they were playing a high intensity game. It's just like they had an off 15 minutes of the first period. But I really like what I've seen from them. You have two goaltenders, one that obviously has loads of experience in the postseason and has won three cups, I believe, if I have that, if I remember that correctly in my head in Flurry, Is it three or four? I believe it's three. Yeah. I believe it's three, yeah. And um, obviously got Vegas to the Cup in his first year. And then you have Rob Leonard. So I love that team's uh, chances to do something. But the Avs, I mean, they're also playing at a high intensity. Uh, you've had Gruby look good. You got Pavi look good. And they talked about after the game when I was watching that post game, um, it was Vladdy, Vladdy Nemesnikov talked about we have full utmost confidence in both of these guys. You can throw either of them out there, and we're going to play, like, basically bats out of hell in front of both of them. doesn't matter who's in net. We have all full-blown confidence in both of these guys. So, obviously, that's very good to hear, and that's also why I think this is going to be a great game. Both teams have confidence in both their goalies. It doesn't even really matter who you roll with. Who do you think they're going to roll with, though? Uh... I would say probably Leonard because the first game for Vegas was obviously a little bit cleaner than uh, game two, and I don't think that's any fault of Flurry. I would just say because of how the energy was in game one compared to game two, they'll probably go with Leonard again, and it just seems like they're going to go with Leonard as their starter, so I would think he would get game three. And then for Colorado, that's a little bit more difficult. Um, Francois looked good, but like they even said on their own post game. Gruby got tested more, so he's been more battle tested per se. How you all, everyone always says that in the round robin so far, where Francois just looks solid, like he is great with positioning. Either way, you'd be fine. I think they're probably put Grubauer in just because he's been more battle tested, just in case against a great team. 
in um, the Golden Knights, you get that ample scoring chances against. They might go with that. And if they go with that, I think that shows that he's probably going to start the postseason. Whoever they go with is probably going to be who starts the series. As far as, uh, say, okay, let's look at right now, we don't know exactly what's going to happen with Chicago and, and the Blackhawks. And when you're watching this, you'll, you may have already known because we're probably going to be putting this in here. We're prob- I'm probably going to be putting this out later. But um, what an exciting time and we, if uh, the Blackhawks beat the Oilers here and uh, one of these teams are going to be playing the Blackhawks in the next round. I would think that would be the lowest team Unless it was Montreal. Uh, no, yeah, Blackhawks would be it. What an exciting time there. You'd have to be getting your lips wet for that. Smacking your lips for that series, I would think. Yeah, yeah that would be an interesting... Uh, you have Chicago. Everybody thinks they're an older team. They're not. They're actually one of the younger teams. It's just they have all the veterans at one. So you have that mixed in against Avs or Vegas, but we have to remember Vegas, all those guys made a run to the cup in their first year. So they also have experience winning in big moments. So that would be a very interesting matchup against the Blackhawks if Vegas wins because both teams, it's just the Blackhawks have won Stanley Cups. Vegas in their first year, that team was a buzzsaw through the league. So those guys have experience winning in big moments. And Tuck obviously has looked solid. So if you can have other guys step up, and have a pesky player like him continue to look good. Um, that's going to obviously really help you out. So, I was really surprised when Minnesota let Tuck go there. I that was a stupid know. decision. I would have yeah. liked to have been a fly on the wall when, you know, because that's Chuck we're talking about. Yeah. Smart man. I, I don't know exactly what that was all about. Uh, <laughs> maybe sometimes they do hey. things because players say. Like, they do things for the yeah. players. It could have also been um, more, like they said, up top. Like, Fletcher seemed like how he kind of got let go there. It was kind of all weird in the end. You don't know how much uh, he got along in the end with maybe everybody in-house. So maybe it was like, I want to keep this guy. I think he has good talent. And I know people are like, well, we want to sign this guy. So we don't want to have to sign this guy in the future. You never know what goes on in-house. It's just sad that. You see it, but all, all the good ones make a mistake every now and again. You can't hit 100% of your shots. So. Well, they did it to protect Broding. They yeah. would have had to let Broding go. So their defense was weak. You know, not, I don't know. It's uh, it's like hindsight's 2020 20 type thing. But I, things, sort yeah. of, but I really like Tuck. And I think they really, I don't think it was an easy decision for them. So, anyways, um, I got to lean on the Avs on that game, but honestly, I don't think I'd be giving my clients any bets on this no. game. That's going to be one to watch there. I'm really going to enjoy yeah. that game. By the way, for anybody that saw my reaction there as Pirlo was talking, that's because uh, if you go back and see the highlight after we record this of the game on Friday, Michael Grabner just sniped one over UC Soros. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's why after, oh, it deflected off of someone with pinball, but that was a nice, uh, that was a nice goal to go in that top corner, but. And, and, and good for a guy that is, looks like he's kind of on the outs in Arizona to get him feeling better about himself. Uh, okay. So let's then of course go to our, our team, <laughs> Philadelphia Flyers and the Tampa Bay Lightning and the ramifications of this game. Matt, for the, these are the first games where you're in, I think, in these uh, round-robin tournaments that are going to have some meat to them. How about you? Yeah, well, first of all, if the Canadians win the day, then tomorrow, whoever's playing this game is going to know if they win, they're going up against Montreal. So yeah. that's going to give you more of an incentive to say we're basically going up against Carey Price because we're not going to let Shea Weber play like the Shea Weber of old in our series. So if that continues to happen today, and that's a big reason why the Pens lose on Friday as we're talking, um, then that game's going to even have more added incentive because you're going to want these teams to win to play the seed that ended up upsetting in the first round. But I don't think anybody thinks the Canadians will – get through the play-in round if they get through the play-in round. So. 
I didn't think they'd get through Pittsburgh. Yes. Who the hell knows? So, yeah. but, uh, I, I, if either one of these teams are playing the Montreal Canadiens uh, and the Canadiens win that series, I think I'd give up. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that? That, that would be tw- that would just be the uh, mantra of 2020. That, that should, yeah, exactly. That yeah. tells you that 2020 was voodoo land, and we're just going to forget about this. <laughs> uh, good for Montreal Canadiens fans, though. Awesome for you guys. You guys deserve to win uh, because you're great over there, and I, I love the hockey's like a religion there. But yeah. Uh, I think I'd be playing pretty hard here to get an opportunity if they know that it's going to be Montreal to play Montreal in that first round. Uh, Philadelphia or Tampa yeah, should yeah. easily be able to take Montreal in no, this yeah. series. My gosh. No, they should because I think the Flyers are playing a bit of a different game now in the round robin, but I think that's also AV being smart and not pulling all the cards out of the hat yet where we're playing more of a skill game when we play more of a net front game. We're doing more of a Bruin style game right now where you get that one pass that the guys open in front of the net, like the Sandheim goal makes a deke and score. Normally we're a team that does some of that, but also has net front presence that now it's like, everyone's like, let's just do a different type of style because we can play basically whatever the hell we want. And then in the playoffs, we're just surprised. I mean, the first team again playing our old style, and they're like, "Wait, where the hell did this come from?" We thought they were playing a more skilled style. Now, what the hell? Like, I think this is honestly like planned by AV to have it be like this, and then in the playoffs, all of a sudden they're going to play full physical bore again, and not play a combination of that with playing almost like Tampa, like kind of compared to playing like we normally play. I think it's actually a disguise tactic that AV's using and still winning with a different method. So in the playoffs, he just starts killing people with the old method. Well, I think both of these teams can play maybe better than any other team out there off the top of my head, any style you want, you know. Uh, Tampa Bay did well getting Coleman uh, at the trade deadline. Uh, Also, um, not Goudreau, uh, Name escapes yep. me from San Jose there. Uh, oh. it'll, come, it'll come to me. You um, know I'm talking about that, right? Yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I'm trying they to. They got some grit, let's put it that way, at the trade deadline. They gave up a first for him, too. While we're talking, I'll look it up, or you can look it up and we'll get his name. But uh, oh, yeah, here's Cap Friendly. Yeah. Our Cap Friendly. Cap Friendly, it's the best there. I said it. Okay, yeah, we go. Uh, that's what I use all the time. But they got. they. Both Philadelphia, especially on defense, I find I think with Philadelphia with Proby, who gets doesn't get enough uh, credit for how physical he can play, um, and Niskanen as well. Um, they they got a solid. They they've got a lot of guys there, and and then you got maybe not a big guy, but Konechny that plays with a lot of jam. Uh, they they got a, oh, and then you know Kubello or uh, I always get his name. All Bay Kubel. Obey Cobell, yeah. Obey Cobell, I love that. And that line they put together uh, is fantastic. So in Philadelphia, um, they can. Uh, this is one of the one of the teams in the NHL, and the reason why I kind of picked them maybe to make it out of the East, either. And you said Tampa Bay as well. I like both of them to uh, because they can play it any way you want, right? Yeah, well, that's what they said uh, the other night when I was watching the lead in. Tampa last year, you had the knocks of, oh, they can play. They can beat you with anybody on the ice in terms of skill, but they don't have any tenacity. They don't have the grit to beat you in the postseason. So then, like you said, they went out and added a guy who's also pretty good in the faceoff dot when he's put in there. And Blake Coleman, who also can piss off the other team sometimes when he needs to. So that that helps to that Elch. And then... They also added other guys in their team. Their team just shows – it's not even just that. It's just guys last year that didn't show that play style as much. This year just played because Cooper changed the system a bit more physically and more um, along the boards. Also, I think who you were thinking of was Goodrow, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Who is a guy that obviously adds that physicality. He's a good bottom six guy to have in the playoffs. Um so he's a guy that adds to their Mike or Michael Jesus. Um, 
Mitchell Stevens is a guy that's not a big guy, but sometimes tries to be a little pesky himself. I just called him Michael by accident, but um, that's uh, and then obviously that's yeah. part of why Coburn still is on their team. <laughs> like, yeah. like let's be like let's be honest. Uh, like that's a that's a big reason why uh, Coburn's still on their team at this point of his career because whenever they put him in, he's a guy that plays a little bit more of a physical and the reason they have Luke Shen on their team because and, whenever and he's Doc in they play a more physical yeah Bo Bogosian was a great pickup but the reason they have Shen and uh, Coburn as backups is because if somebody goes down they want somebody that plays a little bit more physical they don't want to put somebody in that's just going to play soft and because they have enough guys that have skilled games they want their, guys that can play more physical their defense is scary Head McDonough, yeah. Shen, oh especially when you do good when Luke Shen's in like <laughs> that, like Luke Shen, no offense, but he's not the best defenseman. Like if your lineup still, yeah, if your lineup still looks flawless, like when he's in, then you you have a pretty good defense. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Sergachev, McDonough, Hedman, Shattenkirk, uh, but go Chernak. Wow, that's got to be the best defense in the league right now. I would have to say, uh, Philadelphia Flyers. I like. Uh, I just like Carter Hart over Vasilevsky, and a lot of people may disagree with me there, but I do. So let's go over to Sunday then. Uh, I got to go back to my thing, and we will look at what may happen on that fine day. Uh, now you've got Stars Blues. That's the only one, right? Stars and Blues? No, Stars and Blues and then Bruins. And Bruins Capitals. Capitals, yeah. Stars and Blues, both of them have looked absolutely horrible in this uh, round robin. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, it hasn't looked pretty. What do you What do you got to say about that game? The Stars aren't playing to win, I can tell from that. It seems like they're playing to get guys in and figure it out and then try to play their game in the playoffs because in the actual, like, 16 team. Because it seems like they're in a feel out process where St. Louis kind of seemed like that in game one, but then in game two, obviously they went up. I want to say it was four, nothing. No, it was three, nothing. Maybe it was either three or four, nothing. And then the Knights just came back on them. So they're a team that just looks off right now more because they actually tried. It looks like they tried to play their game in game two, then just lost it where Dallas just looks like they're not even caring about the round robin that much. It looks like they're more into it for the next thing and just getting guys playing time and putting in both goaltenders and doing all that good stuff because they left Ancon Kadobin out to dry in that one game. He did not play a bad game. They just left him out to dry. He was on his back the whole time making these like butter or those like bird saves where you just fly on your back. and Like um, these are two teams – you're going to want to – well, one, if Chicago beats Edmonton is looking that good, you're probably going to want to potentially win because they have experience. Like I said, they might not be the best team to go up against when you're not looking too pretty. So – and then Calgary, if Calgary ends up being the team, uh, Calgary looks great too. So I don't think I would want to go up against Jeff Ward's team if that ends up being the lowest seed. Because he looked, they look very good too. So you want to win this game, whoever it is. If the Blues win it, it would be more. It would be a wrap that they would uh, get the higher seed. I actually feel the Stars. Um, if they win, that's the only way they could um, not be in fourth. Obviously, for both of these teams, but the Blues. I'm trying to see in the West. Yeah, the other two teams are two and zero, so yeah, they would be fine. If anybody else was also one and two, the Blues would automatically have got that tiebreaker. But luckily, the other two teams are two and zero, so they would just go to two and one, because the Blues would literally have got the second seed for being that bad just because of the regular season tiebreaker. So it's a good thing that didn't happen. But it's they just need to get going. Both those teams look sloppy as a whole. They. The Blues, if they come out and play like they did at the start of the game, they'll probably win this game on Sunday. But they need to play a full 60. They just forgot how to play hockey all of a sudden against the Knights, it looked like, and just couldn't figure anything out. And, I mean, if I'm Jordan Bennington, like, I'm going to 
pretty soon get pissed at my defense. Because we had a pretty good ranked defense, and all of a sudden in the playoffs, they're like, hey, guys, where's the puck? Did you see the puck? I didn't see it. Where'd it go? It's like, if your name's not Colton Paranko or, like, Alex Petrash, it's like, did you see the puck? No. Oh, okay, cool. And then, meanwhile, the other guy's all the way down, and then Jonathan Marshall Salt scores, and you're like, oh, there it is. So, like... Like, I don't understand. Like, these guys are puck watching a bit. They just need to get going. It's It's been – those have been two hard teams to watch. I haven't – I ended up ch- shutting off some of their uh, games in the round robins other than yesterday's because I like watching Vegas, but they're not the easiest teams to watch in the round robin. Well, I didn't like Dallas all year. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I, I still don't like them in the playoffs here. Uh, whoever they play in the next round, I probably won't put them – I probably won't pick them. Uh, it's something essentially wrong in that room, I think. And I think I know what it is, too. Sagan has been a problem. Boston, uh, I, I think I think Sagan, I don't know. Sagan seems to be a problem. That's all I'm going to say about that. I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, Boston is a pretty good judge of character, although Hamilton doesn't look like a good move right now, but they were partiers. That's the only reason why Boston does what they did. If you're a partier and they're afraid you're going to stay that way, they don't want you near them. The Boston Bruins have an ownership group that doesn't want that associated with their product. So uh, that's that's why they're both gone. And Dallas, it looks like Hamilton may have turned his ways around a little bit, but Sagan maybe still has a lot of growing up to do. And for $9 million a year, that's not what you want to see. <laughs> So that's, uh, but we'll, that, that's an interesting series. I do think, I would hope that one of those guys, that they're playing hard and that, uh, I think St. Louis is going to, will likely win that as well, like you said. Uh, Craig Berube looks pretty pissed. <laughs> he looks pretty So pissed. does Jordan. That's what I'm saying. Like, eventually, a guy that quarterbacks your defense, apparently, from things I read, too, and normally communicates well with your defenders, so I eventually could say in the locker room, guys, what the hell's going on here? Like, like I mean, if you're a goalie that's getting all those shots put on you, you're you're looking bad because your defense is just hanging you out to dry when you went up four nothing, and then all of a sudden they're leaving people open in front of the net, or yeah. for one timers, and it doesn't make you look good when it's not really your fault. So, like, I think they need to get going soon, otherwise. Jordan Bennington is probably going to become a pretty vocal leader in that locker room and start telling people what they need to get doing. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go to the next game because that, that uh, the Bruins Capitals, again, talk about two teams that have yeah. not looked good. One of them I kind of expected, the other one not so much. Um, I haven't still liked Washington all year. So I think they're. I think Reardon is. I think Reardon could be gone this year. I really do. If they don't have a strong playoffs, I don't think they're going to fool around with them anymore. Yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, they were good and then fell off, obviously towards the end there. So that's why they weren't able to really fully get going, and that's what let the Flyers and other teams ramp up the standings right behind them because they had a bad second tier towards the end of the season. Um, or the Capitals had that, excuse me, um, where the Bs were throughout very good. But then now, because of the people coming back for the training camps and everything, they've had guys arrive late for whatever reason, and guys come back later, so everyone's not in hockey shape and is just kind of out there playing. You You have to have some time to adjust. I feel like they're honestly fine and will probably – look okay in the playoffs. I think it's just – they also don't have – I don't think they put Kase into that other game either. So I don't know if Kase will play Sunday. I would think he could play by then with all the practices he had. But he's another guy that when they traded for him, he was supposed to be a good guy in addition to their second power play. And in their lineup, he's going to be a good addition if he's in on Sunday too. I honestly think the Bruins probably win against the Capitals because um, they're – they're going to look good, I think, in the final game. Like I said, it's getting these guys practices. Marshan now has a lot of practices, on, not a lot, but more under his belt. Kase has a few under his belt. So I think they'll look good Sunday, and it'll kind of look more like the normal Bruins 
especially because Tuke will be in Sunday, I have to imagine. So I think they'll look uh, pretty good Sunday and win that game and go one and two. And then the Capitals will have to be the team to play the buzzsaw that turned into the Carolina Hurricanes. So, Yeah, I would not want to be doing that. Uh, I think um, – I think you're. Li- I, I think I kind of agree with you with the Bruins there. Uh, the, it could be that this were this is really a turnaround. I'm not so sure with Kasha though. Uh, I didn't really like him in his last year with Anaheim. I think it's going to take him a while to adjust to whatever was going on there. Um, I don't think he, in the long run he's going to play too much. Uh, but I do agree that the out of the two teams, the Capitals just seem loosey goosey all year long. They, they, they haven't had pushback when they needed it. They've, let, they've taken teams lightly all year. Um, this, something's missing. And I think maybe part of it might have been might be the energy of Holtby. That whole Holtby situation where Holtby's not coming back. He also seems to be a guy who wears his uh, emotions on his sleeve. Uh, he, for a great, he might be the greatest goaltender I ever saw doesn't handle adversity well does that make sense yeah i mean the thing with hopey is he looked pretty solid making those saves that he could make against us it's just the capitals did not look good so i don't know what like it's not like hopey's gonna skate up the ice himself and uh score a goal that would be nice i guess if you were allowed to do that one legally and two if he uh, actually could do that that would be a pretty weird sight to see but the I mean, they're just not playing well. He's not the problem in the playoffs. It might be the energy because they know he's going to be gone, but he's been playing fine. He's been playing pretty good in the playoffs. Your team has just stunk. Your defense that normally possesses the puck more doesn't, um, and your team that normally possesses the puck more doesn't. So it's kind of hard when you don't have the possession numbers for your goalie to do much for you unless if – it's like Carey Price having a normal Carey Price postseason where he just comes into the playoffs and he's a different man, even if he had a little bit of a, like people say, off season. So that's uh, why I feel I feel the Capitals will be fine in the first round potentially because it's going to depend how they look against the energy of Carolina, but – you got to remember with Carolina, Carolina doesn't have, of some of the teams in the round robin, the dead-eye lineup that you go down. They have a good lineup, but they don't have the deepness of a Tampa, of a uh, even the Flyers. They don't have a deepness of the Flyers. Uh, they don't have a deepness of the first two lines of the Capitals have. You have Kuznetsov and Ovechkin. They have Sveshnikov, but they don't have like someone that goes whoop like there's that guy other than Svechnikov, really. Um, so it's that's going to be an interesting matchup if the Caps do lose this game like I think they will. So I think I, I think if, if it is Washington, Carolina, I'm, I'm going to put I'm going to be leaning Carolina or not. I think Brandon, I think you brought up. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. it'll go six or seven, though. Maybe. Maybe yeah. we'll see. I, I, you were you were correct about Brindamore. I mean, I loved Brindamore, but I didn't know exactly where he was as a coach. But he's made it abundantly clear this playoffs he is up there with the upper echelon of coaches already at, in his young tenure as a coach. And um, I love what he's done with that. What he did with that team uh, against the New York Rangers, he really dismantled them. And now I know that Lundqvist was in, and I said that. You know, if Shesterkin was in, I, I, I would go with the Rangers. And if he wasn't, I would go with Carolina. That being said, I think I might have been wrong there. Carolina was playing so well system-wise and uh, that against New York, the New York Rangers, I don't even think Shesterkin would have made the difference. No, so. they, just, they just played really well. And I think – I'm not saying – Washington will be able to beat them. I'm saying I think they're look more like their actual game and they're go six or seven against them. The problem is if you go six or seven against a team like Carolina, they're a team that thrives off of the adrenaline rush and the momentum and all that. Yeah. They're probably going to be the team to get that win in a game seven, not you. So that's why you would probably want to win before game seven because because 
the hurricanes are the biggest. Let's just fuel ourselves full of energy and then go out there and dominate. If it's a game seven, their adrenaline is going to be kicking. They're going to be firing, and that's not probably going to be the best for uh, Washington. The only advantage they would have is in that game, they should have the uh, first change because they would still be the better team. Even though they lost in the round robin, they would still obviously be the better seeded team as a four seed if they were to lose Sunday. So, yeah, if Boston, what a disappointment for all of this to happen and then have to play Carolina in the first round. Uh, I think they'll have a very difficult time against Carolina. The thing is, it's again, it's always going to be about the Morazic, right, in the background there of whether he can keep it going. Uh, mostly I think he's keeping it going based on a very awesome system that Brendan Moore has put in there that helps his goaltender out a lot. Well, boys and girls, this is our my 40, full, full 42. Joe Boric has, is, uh, is an amazing writer, a podcaster, and uh, like I said, young mind that you really need to take a look at the stuff. And what is that stuff, Joe? Uh, I have now on Overtime Heroics, I do baseball and hockey stuff. Um, the two teams I'm doing for them because they have Flyers coverage is the Kings and Ducks. So I'll probably reach out to Anthony for help on some stuff there. Uh, but the – and then you can find baseball stuff, Pub Sports Radio. You can also find Pirlo and I's good friend Andrew who does the True Philadelphian Sports Kit with me on there as well. And then Flyers Nitty Gritty with the great Jamie Baskow, who's always full of energy. If you want to see somebody who gets you pumped up and is always full of the most energy, like he just had 17 uh, Red Bulls, then uh, Jamie's probably the person for you. <laughs> yeah, Jamie is something else. He's a great writer as well. Talent yeah. that do is I first started watching Jamie when he was practically starting out. Uh, and or started reading Jamie when he first started uh, out and uh, uh, my channel was a lot bigger then and I I was kept on talking about him talking about him because I really love the guy I really love his writing didn't know anything about him I just knew what he wrote and now I've got to know him as a personality and it's it's fantastic you mentioned Delhi I'm doing a video with him right away Delhi also a great writer uh, at Delhi tweets and uh, he'll tell you about all the other stuff that he does you can go to Beepal Beepal picks on YouTube and also our Patreon, where I'm hitting parlays at 60% right now, uh, which is about basically four times your money, 60% of the time. You can do the math on there. And if you can't, you can come over to Patreon and we'll do the math for you. Uh, <laughs> you're making a lot of money is all I got to tell you. That's our full 42. You guys have been awesome. Subscribe, Bell. Lots of love to you. Thank you, Joe, for being here. Say yep, bye. Enjoy the hockey.